Hey guys and welcome back. Today's video, as you've seen from the title, is going to be a comparison between the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition and the DB Power EX5000. Now if you've looked online like I have, there are a ton of different action cameras out there on the budget side of things. But which one do you go for? Well, I found this one, which is the DB Power EX5000, to be probably the best selling and highest rated on Amazon. And for the money, you can't go wrong. This little thing comes packed full of features, has a host of different accessories that come in the box. It's got a two inch screen on the rear, shoots in full HD, has Wi-Fi connectivity, has a 14 megapixel Panasonic CMOS sensor, has a 170 degree field of view wide angle lens, comes with a waterproof case. I could go on and on, but you know what? Let's have a look inside. Now inside the box, you'll get the waterproof case and camera, zip ties, charging and data cable, some Velcro straps, spare battery cover, just in case you lose yours, an instruction manual, very important, bike mount, second battery, self-adhesive mounts, an open case, obviously if you want to record audio, additional adhesive pads, you'll also get six additional mounts, and a replacement case clip should you break or lose yours. Now we've seen what's inside the box, let's do some side-by-side -side comparison shots against the Hero 4 Black Edition. Now just before we get started, let's have a quick look through the instruction manual. There you go, so we've read through the instruction manual. Next thing we want to do is have a look at the device itself. You can see here, this is the waterproof case that it comes with, which is very similar to GoPros. The case feels well made and sturdy, and according to the manufacturers, this will keep the camera itself waterproof up to a depth of 30 meters. Now we've got the camera out from the case, we can have a little closer look. The actual texture to the camera case itself is like a rubberized finish. As you look down the side there, you can see that there's the charging data cable ports along with the SD port as well, so you can put your micro SD card. You've got your LCD screen at the back, you've got your selection buttons on the side there. That's for operating the actual menu itself once you're into the settings. Looking around the front of the camera, you'll notice on the lens there's a little tiny film there, a little protective film, so you need to remove that before you start recording anything. The power button at the front is very similar to GoPros and also is the same button you use to change through your different modes. Looking at the bottom of the device, you'll see that's the battery door there. And to get inside, all you need to do is put a nail on top of that clip and pull back and the door will open. Pull the battery out and let's have a look at the back. It is a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery and apparently that will do 8 hours at 720p or 5 hours videoing at 1080p. To replace the battery door, simply line up that little tooth in the side, push down firmly, it will click into place. Now we're going to be using that mode and power button on the front of the camera now. Press and hold that down for a couple of seconds and what you'll find is when you press and hold that down, the actual intro screen will commence. And there you go, up comes the DB Power intro screen and you can see it starts on the video mode. Now the button at the top is what you're going to press if you're going to actually start a video or to take a photo and at the front that same power button, click that and you'll be able to cycle through the modes. The buttons at the side as I said before, that's what you use to cycle through the settings but first of all what we're going to do is just check through the different modes we get. So we're going to press that button, video mode, goes on to the camera mode, press it again goes on to the actual library itself where your videos and pictures will be stored next setting goes into settings mode itself and then it cycles back to the video mode so now we've had a look through at the different modes that are on the camera let's have a look through at the settings now to look through the settings as I said before use these buttons on the side there just to scroll up and down through the different menu options and then at the top of the actual camera that mode button there just press the OK and that will make your selection. So you've got 1080p Full HD, 720 in 60 frames, 720 in 30 frames, WVGA and VGA. To make your selection, simply press that button at the top again and it will go back onto the main menu screen. 
and once you're back into the menu screen you'll see there are a ton of different options now to go through each and every one is going to take far too long so what I'm going to do is fast forward this section but just give you a bit of a list of all the different options that are within the menu system itself you can change the exposure, ISO, color mode, white balance, screen rotation, anti-shake mode, car mode, motion detection change between the video qualities itself or the picture quality for the photos there's HDR, date stamp, timestamp, choice the 13 languages, auto power off timer, screen saver timer, there's Wi-Fi settings and you can choose to format the memory card if you wish. Now we've run through the various different options let's compare these in the flesh side by side as you can see you've got the DB Power on the left and the Hero 4 on the right they're not too dissimilar in the actual size and the width of the front. From the top you can see that the DP Power is slightly chunkier. There's a, obviously an LCD screen on the back of the DP Power. I don't have that on the GoPro Black because that comes with a different backpack. Now this is the uh, backpack for the LCD screen for the GoPro just so you can see the difference. And what I'll do is I'll compare that now in size against the DP Power. So it makes the GoPro Hero 4 slightly chunkier. But instead of the actual LCD panel itself, you can change that and you can buy a battery pack as well. That's another optional extra, but you're looking 60, 70 quid. Okay, so the next stage is to connect the camera to the app. You're going to need to go onto the Play Store on Android and you're going to need to put in the name of the app, which is Final Cam at the top, and then hit Enter and that will bring up a list of apps. Now at the top there you can see that's the app that we want, Final Cam with the orange logo. Tap on the install button, click accept and that will start to install. Once that's installed, go onto your Wi-Fi settings and you're going to need to try and connect to the camera. Now you should see at the top, there we go, EX5000, tap on that you will get a pop-up screen that will say you can't connect to the internet but disregard that, go back to the app now once the app loads in the top right hand corner you'll see there's a little plus sign tap on that and from the list you should see the EX5000 at the top, tap on that and input the password now that's always 12345678 click add and then what that will do is now pair with the camera and you should be able to now see the feed coming live from the camera onto your phone once you're connected, you've got full remote access to the camera via the phone. You can start videos and stop them, you can take pictures, you can adjust some settings, and you can download the media from the camera to the phone. Okay, so we've had a thorough look through the camera and all the things it came with. Now let's give it a test side by side against the GoPro Hero 4. Right guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little walk down to the local field to give the cameras a test side by side. So we've got the GoPro Hero 4, this is going to be on the left of your screen, and the DB Power, which is on the right of the screen. Now it's not really a bright and sunny day, which is a shame, but uh, this should give you an idea of how they stack up against each other on image quality. Both have got the same settings, so the full HD on the DB Power only goes up to 30 frames a second so what I've done is I've changed the GoPro Hero 4 down to 30 frames per second to make that fair but at the same time we're going to do the microphone test so from now on you're going to hear the GoPro Hero 4 and as we come down these steps here to the bridge which we will take a little photo of and we can do a comparison against the two photos again both on their higher settings now going to change over to the microphone for the DB power as we come through the turnstile there we go that's a little bit of a foggy day isn't it there's some people there in the distance They're walking their dog and across the horizon So there you go guys, that is the full review on the EX5000. So we've compared it against the Hero 4 Black Edition and we've compared it against it for video quality and for audio quality. And to be honest, it's done pretty well. 
it is a budget camera you have to remember that and it's never going to perform quite as well as the market leaders but for a fraction of the cost this is well worth getting if you're looking just to dabble your toes into the HD action camera pool and you don't want to invest all of your money in an expensive piece of kit this is by far one of the best budget cameras you're going to find on the market today if you found something that you feel that performs better than this let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed the video and you found it useful please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon